Okay, good morning, church. Good morning. So good to have each and every one with us this morning. I pray that you'll get a, a blessing out of the morning service. We're going to be having our Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas dinner combined after the service this morning. So I do hope and pray that each and every one is able to stay and take part of that with us as well. <clears throat> this morning, before we begin our service, uh, we'll stand and salute our flags, but we also want to pray for all of the victims uh, this past weekend that was affected by these tornadoes. Uh, my goodness, our heart breaks for them. Especially the ones there in Maysville, Kentucky. I think they was hit the hardest. And just a couple of weeks away from Christmas, you know. Um, I wish we had all the answers to man's questions, but we don't. But we're called to trust God regardless. Because God is still in control, isn't he? Yeah. So at this time, if you will, let's all stand as we salute our flags. And we're going to pray for all those victims this morning. <clears throat> Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for the kingdom it stands, one brotherhood, united all mankind in service and love. The Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, not his word in my heart, and I will not sin against God. The American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I would ask you this morning, let's go to the Lord in prayer together, okay? Heavenly Father, God, we just come before you this morning again with thankful hearts, God, Worship in her heart and praises upon her lips, God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity, God, that once again, uh, as a collective body of believers, we can meet together as we lift our voices, as we worship you and praise you. Father God, thank you for the privilege to come before you, to pray, to stand in the gap for others, Lord. And as we so often say, we never know one moment to the next what, what the future holds for us. Uh, it ain't a matter when the storms come, it's all a matter of when they come. As you gave us the parable in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, that our house needs to be built upon that solid rock because when the rains descend, the floods comes and the winds blows, it'll beat upon the house and it will fall not. And Lord God, help our faith to ever be settled and established in you, God. Lord, once again, we pray for all the precious people that their lives has been destroyed by these storms that's come through. Uh, many people has lost loved ones. Uh, there's still a lot of people that's unaccounted for. Uh, we just can't imagine. We can't imagine the hurt and pain that they're, they're going through. We can only pray, God, that they'll uh, turn their hearts and minds to you, Lord, and seek you, God, for that comfort and peace that passeth all understanding. God, we just pray this morning if they would be the one here lost and undone, they don't know the free pardon of sin, they don't know you as their personal Lord and Savior, I pray today would be the day, God, that you would open up their eyes and let them see their need for you before it's everlasting too late. God, may you get the glory and the praises out of everything that's done and said here because this, this is what it's all about, is to worship you, is to praise you. And Lord, as you said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me, God. And that is our desire this morning. Lord, we love you. We praise you for all the things you've done, all the things you're going to do. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. 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 All right. Good morning, everyone. And welcome out to the house of the Lord. We are so glad to have you out with us this morning. Today's going to be a little bit different from our music service. Um, our piano player had to go out of town today. And uh, so we're going to, through technology, we're going to use the computer and then we're going to, we're all safe. Amen. So uh, make sure you sing extra loud this morning. <laughs> the first song this morning uh, is 
It's going to be on page 205, and it's entitled Away in the Manger. And Dwayne will ask you to uh, turn the lights down for us if you don't mind so we can all see. Uh, now this one, this one comes in real quick, so be ready. As soon as he starts this, it's going to be, you got to be ready to sing. A little bit longer. Yeah, that's kind of hard for us to see you doing words back there. All right. So page 205, if you don't, if you need your book, but like I say, it's on the overhead, the words are. So. <laughs> Sing in your book, it's on page 192, but you can't go by what the book says because this one has two verses you might not know. But you know how the melody goes, so just follow the words and sing it straight on through, and, and it'll be really beautiful. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Oh, 
Tory hymn this morning, and as we sing, I'll ask the ushers to come forward. So, ushers, this one has two verses, so uh, you're going to come up on the second one. This was entitled The Third Day of the King, and this is what we're all celebrating. Amen. We don't know the exact day, but we just know it's this, it was this time of year, and that's, this is the main reason that we're celebrating is his birthday. Amen. Amen.
Let's go to Lord in prayer. Precious Father, Lord, we do thank you for this beautiful day that you bless us. The day that we can come out to your house, Lord, just to uh, worship together, Lord, and, and uh, spend time with our brothers and sisters and Christ, Lord, and just fellowship. And Lord, we thank you for each one that's come out. And I pray that here we just get a blessing for us, Lord. Lord, as Brother Dave mentioned earlier, we do not want to forget those that are uh, going through this time of tragedy, Lord. And we just lift them all up to you, Lord, and just pray that you would just comfort them this time. And Lord, uh, as we look forward to the next portion of our, our service today, Lord, we pray for Brother David just to give him the words and, and the message that we need to hear, Lord, today. And we just thank you. We're so privileged to be here. Lord, as now as we come to this time of the tithe and offerings, we just want to give back to you what you richly bless us with, Lord. And we just uh, thank you for all that you do for us. In your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Oh, beautiful star, the hope of life. 
Ray Bolts is a a very good uh, Christian songwriter. He is. I think didn't he write "Thank You"? I believe. I believe he did. Yeah. And uh, he, he's written some very beautiful songs. <clears throat> I, I 
trust that you've enjoyed these worship songs as I have. Does anybody else have a song? Okay, if not, let's take our Bibles as we go to the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 2. This time of the year, I just love reading the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. And also the book of Isaiah as we reflect upon God sending His Son as he said he would and that's what that's what christmas is all about celebrating god's promise and sending us a son to die for our sins luke chapter 2 and you find your place will stand as we reference the reading of the word of god and i want to take up her reading in verse 8 and i'm sure we know we all know this story all too well, but it just blesses my heart to read it once again. The Bible says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto us is uh, born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. He shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the same which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Heavenly Father, may you be glorified this morning in our midst through the preaching and teaching of your word. For it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I would like for us to focus our thought on the night the shepherds became missionaries. The night the shepherds became missionaries. And I'm probably not the first one that came up with that title, but I'll be honest with you, every time I read this passage, I, I think about that thought. The night the shepherds became missionaries. Uh, the long wait was now over. It was 700 plus years when Isaiah and other prophets gave this prophecy. And of course, one of the most famous it was Isaiah 9, 6, when the Bible says, uh, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. God had dispatched an angel uh, to the nearby uh, hillside to give news to the shepherds uh, that was keeping watch over their flock. Isn't it interesting that God never sent the angel to the most elite? The just to lowly shepherds that were keeping watch over their sheep. In verse 8, the first thing that I've noticed is that the announcement came during the night. How fitting that was that the announcement came during the night. How fitting that was for the little baby. Jesus Christ being born of a night. Jesus said there in John 9, 4 and 5, I am the light of the world. And the world was uh, thrown into darkness when man sinned against God in the garden. When man sinned against God, he caused the whole human race to fall into sin. And the world was thrown into darkness. Darkness represents sin. But yet here is Jesus, the light of the world, being born in darkness. 
And you know something? Uh, we think about the prophecy that Isaiah also gave in chapter 9, verse 2, when he said, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, I thank God for that. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, came into a world that was full of darkness. Darkness represents sin and doom and gloom and despair. But when Jesus was born, it brought forth so much hope to all people. Amen. And you know something, friends? You know, men is always drawn to the light. We're just simply drawn to the light. But oftentimes when men is exposed and drawn to the light, it reveals to them who they really are. And they don't like it. And then they make that decision not to uh, abide in the light, if you please. Jesus said this in John uh, 3, 19. He said, this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Yes, we are drawn to the light. But when that glorious light reveals to us who we are, some make the decision to turn away from the light, to continue to abide in their sin and their sinful behavior. Because after all, the Bible says in Hebrews, uh, 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 I believe it was in Hebrews 11, 25, there is sin, there is pleasure in sin, but only for a season. But thank God for those that has been drawn to the light and submitted to the light. As Paul said in Colossians 1.13, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son and whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Oh, friends, listen, we can rejoice this morning because of that glorious light, because we submitted to the light and God has brought us out of darkness into this light and he's given us much hope. Amen. And you won't find no hope in this world. This, this world is full of disappointment, heartache, suffering. Oh, listen, you can find hope in Jesus. Amen. You can find hope in this Christ of Christmas. The announcement was made during the night. And you know, I often thought about the shepherds. That night was just like any other ordinary night. The shepherds had a long day. They had a long, hard day attending their sheep. They put the sheep up. They bedded them down. They maybe ate them a bite before they too laid down and rest. And of course, not all of them uh, laid down and slept. One would be on guard because being out there in the wilderness and on those hillsides, it was full of wild beasts and animals that would attack the sheep. And even men that would come in and bring harm upon the shepherds to steal the sheep. So one would always stand guard and they would change off after every third or fourth hour. But now picture this with me if you can. Here they was bedded down for the night. Everything was peaceful and still. And all at once there was a great light and they woke up and they were afraid as any one of us would have been. Uh, that, whole, that whole hillside was lit up and the angel spoke to them and says, fear not, fear not. And you know, oftentimes during the night, bad news and bad things usually happens, but not this time. Yeah. Wouldn't be no bad thing happened this time. God had dispatched angel, probably Gabriel, and he came with good news. He says, for unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Oh, the light of the world. Amen. The announcement came during the night. But then I want to say the announcement came unexpectedly. And again, without a doubt, the shepherds knew all too well of the Prophets prophecy. They all knew. Some seven, some 700 plus years when the prophecy was given that God would send his Messiah, 
the Savior of the world. And you know what, friends? More than likely, the people's hearts grew weak and fainted, and maybe their faith faltered. Maybe they said, you know, we've heard this all of our lives that, that the Messiah would come. He's not come yet. And probably during that time, some had lost hope, some had lost faith. But can I say to you, friends, he came. Amen. He came. He came unexpectedly. They was not expecting him to come that very night. And some here today, and some watching by the way of the internet, you're not expecting the Son of Man to come. And you say again, preacher, we've heard that all of our lives. You're going to continue to hear it until he comes. That is the greatest pleasure I have as a minister to proclaim that Jesus is soon coming back for the church. Amen. He's coming when you think not. I remember years ago, probably in the mid-80s, maybe in the late 80s, I remember over in Tomskinville, Kentucky, it's probably about 35 miles from where we lived, there was a natural gas pipeline exploded. And from 35 miles, you could still feel that. And as and I remember this as a, a, a very young teenage boy. I remember that when we all ran on the back porch and we looked towards that, that, that direction, the whole sky was lit up. And there were some people killed during that explosion. And the testimonies of people, I can still remember, they said they thought the end of, the, the end of time was coming. They really thought that the end of time was coming. But you know, the end of time is not just going to uh, uh, up and come suddenly. There's, there's different things on God's calendar, calendar that's going to take place. The next event on God's calendar is the rapture of the church. The calling away, as Paul talked about, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse uh, 13 through 16. But the point I'm trying to make as the shepherds, uh, they didn't expect the Lord to be born that night, even though it was prophesied, He came. The day and time we're living in, friends, listen, the way a lot of people are living their lives, they are unprepared. They are not expecting Jesus to come back for the church. And the Lord told him there in John chapter 14, verse 3, if I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Amen. Acts chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. So many places that God says, I'm coming back. And yet people today is, is not expecting his return. But I am. Listen to me. I want to say this to you. I believe in the intimate return of the Lord. Yeah. Every day I live, I think today might be the day he comes back. Amen. And I'm looking forward to it. We are to pray for his coming. We are to pray, come Lord Jesus. We are to be looking. We are to be ready. We are to anticipate the Lord's return. Because the moment you think not, he has come. Jesus said in Matthew 24 44, Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man coming. Friends, think about the multitudes of people that's going to be unprepared when he comes. Amen. He's coming. He's going to receive the church. The church is going to be taken down. A lot of times people get to the rapture and the second coming confused as one separate event or as one event, but they're two separate events. There's seven years that separates the one from the other. The second coming of Christ is seen in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, when he comes at the end of the seven-year tribulation to destroy his enemies and his foes. The rapture of the church can take place at any given moment. Did you know there's no signs given concerning his coming back for the church? There's no signs given. But there are signs given concerning his second coming. In Matthew chapter 24, the Olivet Discourse, Jesus gives us signs. And friends, can I say to you, if you go and you study that book, you study that passage, that chapter, you'll see these signs is already here upon us. And the church has not been taken out yet. So I would ask you this morning, how close must it be? It's close. It's close, friends. Listen, 
I'm telling you here today, and I'm not trying to scare you, but if you're here today lost and undone, you don't know, and you're plagued with doubt, you don't know where you're going to spend eternity, I would not leave this place until I made things right with God. Because as he came then, he is soon coming back for the church. Amen. And I would say, oh, come Lord Jesus, come. Think about this. The announcement came during the night. The announcement came unexpectedly. But can I say the announcement came very forcefully. God didn't send man or woman, priest or prophet. He sent the angel to bring forth the good news to the shepherds on the hillsides. Amen. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I simply love that. I love that, friends. And just thinking that when Jesus does come back for the church, he's not sending an angel. He's coming himself because he is pictured as the groom the church is pictured as a bride. The groom is coming for his bride. Paul says, The Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and there shall we ever be with the Lord. Oh, friends, listen, I, I, I get excited when I think about that. I get excited when I think that we are on the threshold of being called up out of here. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. And then we notice in verse 15, the shepherds responded immediately. Notice, uh, when, the, when, when the angels, when, when the angel declared to them that the Messiah has come, notice what, 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 uh, what they say here. In verse 15, he, and they say, let us go now even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. They could not wait until the morning hours to go to Bethlehem. They were so excited, they had to get to Jesus the quickest way they knew. They went immediately to Bethlehem to see Jesus, the, the king of the Jews. At that very moment, Jesus became their main priority. Nothing else mattered to them. Can I say something to you, church, this morning? That Jesus must remain our main priority. We cannot get sidetracked. We cannot get caught up in the worldly system. Jesus must be our main priority. Amen. We must serve him wholeheartedly and fervently. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, today he will hear his voice, harden not your heart. The Bible makes it very clear that when Jesus calls you, you need to make an immediate decision. Accept him. Don't put it off. I wonder how many people that's in hell today, right now as we speak with the best intentions and getting saved, getting a family in church, but death came. Death came. And then just like it was just like Friday night, this past Friday night, early Saturday morning, they was giving out storms, but 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 very little warning. When Jesus comes back, there's no warning. Amen. There's no warning going to be called. There's no whistles going to be blown. When Jesus comes back, as Paul said, in verse uh, Corinthians chapter fifteen, verses one through fifty-eight, the moment, the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be called up out. The sad thing about this, friends, I want you to listen to me. Now listen to me very closely. And I'll back it up in the Bible. If you're here today and you know your need for Jesus, you know you need to repent of your sins, accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, you know that you put it off and the rapture takes place according to what Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12, your mind will be turned over to believe a lie. Your soul will be damned. Amen. They will be people saved in the tribulation period. Multitude of people saved. But they that never hear the gospel, then they're going to be given a chance. And for those to be saved, you'll have to endure the seven year uh, tribulation period because at any moment you give in to the Antichrist and receive the mark of the beast, your soul will be damned. 
And I, if I, 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 I've seen so many people, they run out and uh, to receive this shot. Makes me think, I wonder how many is going to run out to receive the mark of the beast. Of course, the church is not going to be here, but those that's left behind, I wonder how many is going to run out just to get the mark of the beast. Because without it, you won't be able to buy, sell, or trade. You will not be able to function in society. And the main thing is you're going to be considered a rebel. You'll be hunted down and beheaded. You know, those times is going to be so horrible. Jesus says they've never been a time like it, nor will they ever be a time like it. Unless I should shorten those days, no flesh would be saved. That's how horrible it's going to be. But, but the shepherds responded immediately. They, res they, they came joyfully. And I picture my mind again, as the shepherds received the good news, the hearts was just bubbling over with joy. They came running. They made haste, the Bible says. And they came to where Jesus was. In that lowly little cave, a cliff in the rocks where they kept all the animals. Mm. I'm going to preach on that next Sunday. And as they came to Jesus, their hearts were just bubbling over with joy. Their long-awaited Messiah, the King of the Jews, has come. Amen. They were so full of joy. And you know, uh, 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 concerning the Christians, the joy is the second fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22, for the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And, and let me say this. The joy and the peace that the Christian has is much different than the joy and the peace the world has. Amen. Because as a Christian, we might lose all our worldly goods. We might lose everything. But one thing we will not lose is our relationship with Jesus Christ. We will not lose our salvation. Amen. The Bible makes it very clear that we're saved and sealed until the day of redemption. Bible makes it clear in Ephesians 2, 6 that we've already got a place in heaven reserved for you. The joy and the peace that we have. Well, Peter said it was something like this. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. He says it's a joy unspeakable and full of glory. A child, a child of God can lose all their worldly goods, but yet there's joy down deep in that believer's heart. We know the fact that we came into this world nothing and we're going to leave with nothing. But what Jesus has given us, money cannot buy. Amen. And this world cannot take it from us. All the power in hell cannot strip it from us. We are a child of God to those who repent and place their faith and trust in Christ. And I say amen, glory to God. Emmanuel, that's one of his names. That means God with us. Amen. God with us. The shepherds responded immediately. The shepherds came joyfully, but then the shepherds returned eagerly. And the Bible says this, look with me. We're fixing to close in verse 17. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the same which was told them concerning this child. They went back. And, and everyone they come in contact with, they was telling of the events that unfolded. They, they were telling everybody about this baby Jesus, the, the one born king of the Jews. They couldn't keep it to themselves. They was telling everybody. And I believe the shepherds never returned back to their occupation as shepherds. I believe they became missionaries that, that very night. Telling everybody about what had happened. You see something, church? I am absolutely, totally convinced that when one has an encounter with the risen Christ, you will not be able to keep it to yourself. It is so good, you've got to tell somebody about it. Amen. Now today, we know, we talk about this a lot, that this time of the year, Christmas has been, become so commercialized. We know that. It has been for so long. You know what we can do? We can either sit and complain about it or we can do as the shepherds did. Go forth, telling everybody. 
that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. We are to be telling the message of what Christmas is truly all about. It's about God loving us so much that he gave his son to us. Not only to the Jew, but to the Gentile. Amen. I love what Paul says. He says for in Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear uh, except uh, they be sent? And, 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 and he says, uh, how can they preach except they be sent? And then he went on to say, how beautiful are the feet of them which preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Yeah, you know, friends, listen, we can sit around and complain about how Christmas has become so commercialized or we can do as the Bible has already commanded us to do, that is to go forward to the highways and hedges and preaching the gospel, telling the world what Christmas is truly all about. It's all about Jesus coming and dying for our sins. Amen. Uh, let's stand as far as we feel led to go this morning. Oh, listen to me. I, I hope and pray that each and every single one of us can, can say for sure, can say without a doubt, yes, yes, I know what Christmas is all about. The Christ of Christmas dwells in my heart richly. And if not, friends, why? Why have you not received him? Why do you keep putting him off? I'm convinced of this once again, that if men only knew what God had to offer them, they would be a stampede of people coming to God, running to God. But all oh, their hearts and minds are so blinded. I'm telling you that the greatest gift you could ever receive at Christmas time is the Son of God. He is the greatest gift of all. I urge you today to call upon him, receive him into your heart. Until next Sunday, may God bless you and Merry Christmas. Now that we're off internet.